Hello everyone. And the current project we are looking at is IoT Irrigation Monitoring System with Controlling Unit. Its project code is DA118. The motivation behind making this project is the farmer has to face the problem now that most people are coming out of the village and settling in the city, but what they cultivate is inside the village. So sometimes if the farmers wants to do irrigation within the village, so the farmers have to travel quite a long way which is the problem one. And secondary, if ever suddenly, as we are seeing, the climate has changed due to global warming, so it rains suddenly. If we come in such a situation, then there is a problem that if you have turned on the motor and then if it rains and if you are not in the field at that time, then your motor's money plus electricity money plus the water that you have used for irrigation will be wasted. Because due to rain, the farm gets proper irrigation. So, to solve this problem, we have used here soil moisture sensor. This sensor will be dig inside our farm and detect the moisture level of the field and send this data to an analog driver. This driver will convert that data into analog form and give it to the Node MCU microcontroller. The controller we are using is called Node MCU ESP8266. The microcontroller will decide whether the value of the soil it got is dry state or wet state. If it is dry state then the controller will send a signal to the relay driver. To make the relay driver, we have connected a BC547 transistor with a 1K register, so that no reverse current flows. Now the benefit will be that the controller who gives the signal will make our relay trip even at low voltage. And as soon as the relay is turned on, this battery will supply power directly to our DC pump. If the signal received from soil sensor, it will be according to the wet condition, such as if it rains suddenly, so the signal that has been received will turn off this power supply via controller programming. So our pump will be turned off in that case. Now to solve another problem we have developed a circuit here, which is animal destruction to farm. What happens there is we see that some wild animals enter the field and they destroy the farm. So in this case, what we see here is the ordinary AC line, like farm fencing. Normally farmers provide AC line here, but the problem is that animal dies due to such line, farmers get the benefit because animals do not come inside the farm. But our motto is to protect our farm, not to killing of any living being. So the solution to this problem is here. This system does not run on AC but on DC. Plus this system gives you shock pulses, high voltage pulse, because of which you will be shocked but no one will die. So whenever the animal touches it, it will get shock and that animal will run away from there. But he will not die. So to make this circuit we have used shock pulse generator module, which runs on a 4 volt battery. So you can see 4 voltage is very low voltage which we will work on but the shock pulse that you will get, you can see here in the format of this spark. Now another, if any animal or a human enters with any way in the farm, then how will you know? To find out, we have developed a circuit of red and black wire that is visible. Here that is called active high circuit. The circuit that is connected is using 1 kilo ohm resistance through this module, through which if anyone comes here, these two wires will be touched in. As soon as they are touched you will get a notification on mobile application through IoT that someone has tried to enter your farm. Now we will show the real-time demonstration of this project. We have connected this project with 5 volts, which is powering on via laptop via our USB cable. We have turned on the Blink application. It shows the status of auto inside the Blink application, that is when the system is automatically turned on or off, it will appear here. Here we will see the runtime status of the motor whether the motor is on or off. Here we will see the value of the soil sensor which show how much moisture content is available inside the soil. If any human or animal tries to enter our farm so we will have that show at this place. Plus, if we take it to zero, then our system will work automatically here. OK so automatic mode will be switched on automatically. If we switch it to 1, our system will be switched on manually. Here our motor will be off. If we switch to right side our system will on manually. Now we will demonstrate the project. So look because right now, we have dropped the soil sensor in the water. 
due to which the valuation we see is 85. Because this is not a soil, it is a water demonstration. So we are seeing 85 here, and we are seeing that the motor is off. The motor is turned off, which means that the automatic mode that we have keeps the motor in off condition. Because now the soil is completely wet, so our motor is also closed here. So there is no need for any irrigation at all. Now if our soil comes in dry condition, for example, I'll get it out now. So see, the value is automatically reduced and our motor is turned on, and automatically our system is turned on. And the status is also being checked, and if we dip it back into the soil, then the motor will stop. Now this was the condition when our system works automatically, but let's assume that now, it has to work manually. We have an off condition here under manual work. Even if I take out this soil sensor even when it is off condition, my motor will not turn on because I have manually bypassed it. Now this sensor has become independent with the motor. If I dip it back, even then the motor will be off. Now if I turn it on manually, then my motor is turned on. Even if I take it out, the motor will remain on because I am operating it manually. And if I reset it back to zero, then see the motor is on here because it is inside the dry state. If I put it underwater, it will turn off automatically. So this is our first model demonstration. Now we see that how animal entry detected via blink application. So these are the wires that do not have sleeves on them. Keep in mind that this first wire and last wire will be connected within live voltage. Because the system is off right now, we are safe now. But whenever we want to give demonstration, we have to touch this black wire. So if any animal or any person comes, he will touch with it. So as soon as you connect, see that any interference indication inside the fencing is turned on and if it goes away from here, then this indication will be turned off automatically. Then if someone comes, it will be shot because of his body then we will get the indication as soon as the shot is done. This indication will be available from anywhere if we try to enter the farm with any direction. We will get the indication here. We have protected the entire farm via sensor. Now the next part is shock pulse. So for shock bridge, we have connected a battery here and this is its circuit. So now it has to be kept very very carefully. You have to run this module. The shock from the shock bridge seems very fast but there is no problem with health. But still you don't take any risk. You have to turn on this system from here. As soon as this system is turned on, a LED indication will be turned on here. Keep in mind that the LED is on, if it means our system is running. And there are chances of shock as soon as the system runs. So see, I have used this screwdriver here so that there is insulation here, so I will be safe to touch. So as soon as we touch it, you will see the spark here. Okay, this spark is like this. If we touch it, then nothing will remain for a long time. It stopped. Now it will not be current. So if the animal gets stuck in the middle of it, then it will not have any problem with its health. There will be only a slight strong shock due to which it will come out. Now you have seen that now. I have turned off the system. But still our system is charged for once. So even after closing it, you have to touch it again. So this is all about the final project demonstration. Thank you so much.